Hey everybody, I just wanted to provide you a brief overview of Von Tunen's model of agricultural land use, which is the end of key issue 3 of chapter 10. Uh, it will definitely be on your test um, coming up here in a few classes. Von Tunen created this model, and when he created this model, uh, which is pretty simple, you just have to remember a few rather basic assumptions that Von Tunen came up with, and that is number one, that the city is located within the center of an isolated state, and by isolated state he means that we're not going to have a lot of influence from surrounding countries or surrounding markets, it's kind of just this lone state uh, out there in the frontier. Thirdly, uh, the land, the physical environment of the state is completely flat. Uh, we're not dealing with any physical obstacles or physical interruptions uh, within the terrain. Next, uh, he assumed that the soil quality, the climate, um, all those other physical characteristics would be consistent and wouldn't play a role in what type of activities are taking place where. Fifth, farmers in the isolated state transport their own goods uh, via very simple transportation methods. You know, uh, he created this several centuries ago, so we really only had, you know, horse-drawn, ox-drawn carriages to, you know, go to the market there in the center city. And lastly, you know, like all of our economic geography concepts we're talking about, people attempting to maximize profits. The theory of land use. Von Tunen's, what we call his rings, or concentral, concentric ring theory from the 18th century. Um, we really have to know two different terms here. We need to remember what intensive commercial agriculture and extensive commercial agriculture are. Uh, intensive types of agriculture would be things like dairy or truck farms and we're going to find that these are located on the inner rings of his model. Extensive commercial activities like wheat farming and livestock ranching, we're going to find those in the outer rings of his model. Some of this has to do with land value, okay? As you get closer to the city, the price of land increases. You know, proximity or location is going to play, you know, a role in, in how much the land is worth. Um, also, we have to deal with transportation costs and then, you know, the profit of the, the commodity that we're, we're growing. This land value um, that I just mentioned before, this comes up in what we call the bid rent theory, and we're going to use this a little bit later in the year. Uh, here at the center of this model, we have what's considered the peak land value. Okay, and you can see that land value is the highest right there, and then as you move away from this center city, land values drop out considerably. And when I say value, you know we're talking about the term rent here. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll, you know, see this again, this bid rent theory. I just want you guys to be um, kind of aware of that. So, what do we have? Von Tunen's model, a series of concentric rings, and at the center of these rings, we have our city. Okay, so the city is found at the center. Remember this isolated state with the market in the center. Uh, as we move out from the city, we're going to move from intensive activities like dairy, okay, or intensive agriculture, to more extensive activities, uh, livestock ranching, grain farming, and then in the outermost ring, we're going to have, you know, our forest resources that will take place all around out here. In the isolated state with the foregoing statements that we said at the very beginning, 
we would have this, this pattern develop. Okay, so the four rings of agricultural activity with dairying and, in, dairying and intensive farming located in the center of the city, as I've already pointed out, or not in the center, but just outside the center, as I've already pointed out. Uh, as we move out, we're going to look at things like timber, you know, that's going to take place just outside the dairy and intensive activities. We have to remember that this was before industrialization, so wood was our natural fuel source. Outside of timber, our third zone was going to consist of uh, extensive type crops, grains most specifically, and that would take place in here. Now we're moving away. Uh, we need, you know, you think about this extensive. We need, you know, more land. But, you know, grain would be relatively inexpensive to transport. Relative to those intensive type activities like dairy. Dairy, dairy, dairy is very expensive to transport. And lastly, our furthest most ring is going to be ranching livestock, uh, something that needs a lot of space, but once it's been butchered, doesn't take very much um, to move. Sorry, kind of sluggish tonight. Okay, um, remember that these models that we use this year, these are simplifications of reality, and things always don't work out the same way in the real world. Here we have an image that actually comes from your textbook. Uh, on the left, you can see von Thunen's proposed model of what would happen where, and on the right, we have the model as it has been modified by a physical feature such as the river. Most of you can figure out that the river is going to provide a you know, method of transportation that's going to kind of extend those inner rings to this outer area. Um, certainly we know that there's going to be a lot of other changes over time that are going to impact von Thunen's model. We have new technology that's available such as refrigeration um, that's going to, you know, and preservation methods. Uh, that are going to change what can happen where. Uh, we have new types of transportation that, rather than just ox carts. Certainly we have a, a greater number of markets throughout the world instead of just that one. And we have the rise of corporations. And these are going to play a role in what decisions are made. Uh, lastly, we have you know, government influence. We've talked about how subsidies can influence what goes on where uh, and help kind of encourage activities. And also, let's just think about the multiple use of some crops and how that could influence. Uh, one that I was thinking of was ethanol. The fact that the demand for ethanol is so great for not just food, but other purposes as well is going to impact where it's uh, produced. All right, I hope that helps. Let me know if you need any other help on this matter.